Welcome everyone. Welcome to our interviews with the different coaches, trainers and consultants. Today is going to be about leadership and we have a special guest with us, Smita Das Jane. Welcome Smita and thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for having me here. It's such a great pleasure. And uh, the subject is one of my favorite ones, leadership. So very excited to be here with you today. I am also very excited to learn more about your story, your mission, and all the lessons you have from your experience, but also from your knowledge. Smita Das Jane is a strategy and management consulting professional with 14 years of experience in leadership roles with Fortune 15 companies. As an ICF member, a personal empowerment and executive life coach, Smitha provides clarity to busy professionals to create a career they love, find time to do everything they like and live the life they choose. An alumna of the India Institute of Management Indoor and Columbia Business School, Smitha is also an author and public speaker. This is an incredible bio that you have, Smitha. Thank you so much for being with us. I am honored to have you here and I am looking forward to learning more about your experience. My first question would be, what is your story and what is your mission? How did you start it on this journey of helping others become leaders and using your knowledge and your experience in this field? So, Diana, uh, as you had uh, mentioned in my introduction, so I have 14, uh, now 15 years of corporate experience, right? So I have been in leadership roles with companies such as KPMG and JLL. And uh, since I was in the services sector, I worked with many Indian as well as international clients. So it was a very, very high pressure environment and we had to deliver challenging deliverables. And as I grew up the ladder, I realized that no matter, okay, what is the nature of deliverables or, you know, what are the triggers of the various stress and pressures that we face as professionals? One common thread, you know, was underlying all the situations which was consistent throughout my career. That is to get the best out of people, you know, in a role, especially when you're in a corporate world, it's always teamwork that makes the dream work. And uh, you are not in an individual role. So even when you give your best, you are just really, you know, one cog of a wheel. And in order for the car to be driven smoothly, all the wheels need to roll together in tandem. So it became, it. I realized it became, it becomes very difficult, you know, every, in a team, there are any number of people and every people, every, each person has a different motivator, each have their own challenges. So, and especially when I grew up, you know, from a management trainee, I went on to become a team lead, then a manager, then a director, then I headed a business line. So the team size below me increased. And every time, you know, my impression when I started my career was that you know, as you grow up, the work will reduce. In fact, it increased and it increased not due to the nature or because of the number of projects I was handling, because the team size increased and people have their own, you know, challenges. It's ultimately emotions that drive people and it is people that drive performance. So throughout my career, I realized that what I enjoyed the most was dealing with people, dealing with people issues and mentoring them, empowering them to become the best version of themselves. And then I realized when, especially when 2020 came, you know, the pandemic was a year of introspection for most of us. So I was no different. And then I realized, okay, my passion actually lies in, you know, helping people be the best that they can be. And then why am I limiting myself to a particular organization that I'm working or the clients that I'm working for? So, you know, why? that's why I started my own venture, which I call the Empower Yourself Coaching Program. To, I work with all sorts of people, but my niche is in helping busy working professionals to find time to do what they like and create a life that they choose. So that is my mission, to provide pro purposeful clarity to people, to find themselves, to be the best that they can be. 
so it's just you know something in me to help people and i think you know this coaching venturing into coaching in my own private practice that was the best way that i can touch lives because when you work in an organization you are bound by certain limitations there's a code of conduct you are bound by and of course you know there are other pressure ultimately it's the deliverables that you have to do and i'm like if i like work helping people the best supporting them the best then why not venture into a field of work which allows me to work only with people so that's how you know i am here with you today thank you so much smita this is really impressive and i would even say that uh, your story is very similar to mine actually and we are really uh, really on the same path or the same path so to speak and i am really excited to see that other people also notice uh, what is their calling what is their purpose and i believe that your mission comes really at the right place in the sense that i believe that in our careers today we really need to focus more on ourselves and you mentioned that um, the teams are composed by people and people are dri- are driven by emotions and my question would be how do we uh, ensure as leaders that we pay attention to our emotions and our well-being and the well-being of our team whilst also delivering on our technical staff because this is what is required from the organization a great question dina okay the first thing leaders are people right so they have to stay motivated in order for do that they have to take some personal time for themselves and because lives are so busy especially for leaders i do believe that as leaders we need to schedule calendar time for our personal well being you know form a sort of ritual every day and unless and unless we schedule it we t- you know it will basically get lost in the rigmarole of our professional pressures uh the other thing which is very important is the concept of quiet time so essentially you know as uh, employees even as executives we are used to action do action 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 so there's this uh, perception that unless you are th- there in meetings or now in the pandemic world in some zoom calls if your calendar is not fully blocked you know from 9 am to 9 pm then you are not really busy so in this entire race of you know being on the hot seat doing some action we leaders really take out time to reflect you know if you spend one hour a day planning the rest of the 7 8 hours becomes smooth whereas you know if you don't think and you only keep on doing at the end of the day you tend to feel restless and you tend to feel that you haven't achieved anything so i would suggest that leader take leaders take out that quiet time you know take out the time for reflection and thinking preferably at the start of the day but if not possible you know even if the block certain amount of time each day for this quiet time to plan to strategize to make their priority list on what they want to accomplish during the day the rest of the work hours they will feel a lot more productive and as leaders you know leaders set example so when they do it you know it tends to rub off on the team and the higher up you are in the hierarchy if you do that then you know the culture sets in so by you know this step they it will not only basically contribute to their personal development but will it will also benefit the organization as a whole so leaders set examples and by setting such examples such as quiet time you know no meeting hours no zoom call hours simple steps but as leaders even if you take those simple steps it will echo a long way along all the corridors in the organization thank you so much smita this is really impressive and um, i fully agree with you and i lived it myself as well so many times when i felt overwhelmed and stressed and i didn't know how to move forward and basically i didn't take time for myself i didn't stop for a moment and really reflect on what i want on what is happening what am i achieving what do i really want to do with my life and the question for our listeners would be for those who are starting their journey as leaders what is one technique they could apply so that they don't feel so overwhelmed and stressed all the time by uh, all the tasks they have to do and especially when they take up on a new role hmm so the thing is okay uh, 
why only leaders when you start your professional world there is so much pressure and uh, scheduling is something that everybody is fond of doing and we all have long to do lists to do okay so i think the first thing as a leader or as a professional that you would do well to remember is that uh, you know having a long to do list does not signify that you are being productive at work the way to be in control of your time is to make a priority to you know every day set out the three tasks that are on your priority list so the to do list can contain urgent task important task not so important task you know tasks which needs to be finished but are not really strategic in nature but the first thing that you need to do before you start your work day is to ask yourself okay what are the two three key tasks that i need to achieve during the day and if that is accomplished i have a great day if i have time for the rest then that's a bonus if not till still i have a great day so make a priority list it need not be as long as your to do list and you know once you have that you have your priorities clear once you have that then that will be your guide post for the rest of the day and you think uh, that among the the three tasks or the three priorities they should also include something which is personal for themselves uh it depends diana but uh, see every person is different but i did speak about the concept of quiet time a while before so the fact that you are setting out those three tasks right you are actually taking out the time to reflect to note down your priority so by virtue of doing that you are setting up some personal time for yourself but uh, you know if during the day there is something lined up where as a leader okay as a leader you people will do well to remember that the most value they bring on the table is the strategic aspect the strategic thinking uh, a perspective which no one else would see because you know no one else is like them you are leader for a reason so in order for that fresh perspective have bringing that you know fresh ideas on the table you do need some time for yourself if you don't take it out you will become stale and then there would be no difference between you and your other team members so actually you know why only leaders everyone need to take out some time for themselves to stay motivated and refreshed during absolutely. their life absolutely <laughs> absolutely i could i agree more with you and um, i really believe as you mentioned that uh, because we are so busy and doing so many things we really need to find things that really make us feel fulfilled and content with who we are simply and yes. uh, the next question smita would be what do you think means being a leader because i know that this is a role that everyone is dreaming to have no matter the organization no matter the company also as business owners we are supposed to be leaders so what does mm-hmm. it mean to be a leader so dina a leader is not a designation right i mean an organization can bestow whatever title it wants on you uh, but i would call uh, that person a manager if you are you know you might be a vice president you might even be the chief executive but if it's a title given by the company you become a manager you become a team leader a leader means you command respect of the people people below you people who are your peers even people who are above you for certain abilities and qualities that you bring to the table so being able to earn that respect okay and being able to carry your team along it's respect it's not fear you know sometimes people might be looking following what you say just because they are afraid of you afraid of the title that you carry so that's not being leader a leader means being able to command people respect and people should be able to say okay i am not fully convinced with your idea but since you are saying it i am going along so that's what is called respect and that's what a leader is if you command respect of your people you might not be having a formal title or a designation but you are still a leader because you are able to influence others thank you so much smita absolutely i fully agree with you and this also makes me think about um, another thing that uh, when you mentioned that uh, if a team member comes up with an idea 
and brings it to the table, what is the reaction of the leader? What do you think are the options of the leader? Because you mentioned that maybe the leader decides to move on in a certain direction, which is contrary to the team member, in which case the team member has to accept it because this can happen. As you mentioned, that's why we have that person as a leader there to decide. But what are other alternatives? What can happen and what could be the reaction of the leader in this situation? So, see, the first and foremost, I would say, a duty of a leader is to hear all the people, okay? He should listen. I, actually, I hear is a long word, wrong word. Listen is the right word. He should listen to the ideas that are being brought to him and actively listen. He should basically consider its pros and cons. And the other people, suppose you are a leader and I'm bringing some idea on your table, Diana, you should make me feel heard. So even if you say no, by virtue of being heard, okay, I would actually get the satisfaction that my leader gave the idea merit. She actually gave me a hearing. And then she explained to me properly as to the course of action. Why did she take certain step? Why she did or didn't accept it? But as long as people are heard, even if they don't, even if their ideas are not accepted, they would be okay. What, you know, actually uh, fosters this distrust or this disengagement, dissatisfaction is when ideas are dismissed. When, you know, people actually take some ideas and then, you know, leader does not even have time to read them or listen to them or give them a hearing. So make your people heard, actively listen, consider the idea on its merit. And then, you know, as a leader, that's your job basically to apply your strategic thinking and apply your judgment to, you know, carry on what is best. But don't dismiss the ideas of the people. So a leader has options if he does, does not have time, you know, at that very moment when the idea is brought uh, to, to him, then he can very well say that, okay, I'll come back to you by this and this day. And or basically, you know, when he has time, hear it out and then consider it on merit. But I think he needs to consider that idea. He needs to make others around him feel heard and feel respected. Thank you so much, Smith. Absolutely. Absolutely. I fully agree with you. And I have seen actually so many situations in my professional experience, like all kinds of situations when people listen, when people didn't listen. And also the other way around, when I was overwhelmed myself and I didn't have time to listen. And then I was wondering, what am I doing? And the question would be, if uh, the leader is not well with himself or herself, and not in peace or maybe not confident enough. How can this impact the organization and the team? So again, Diana, uh, I mentioned before that a leader basically leads by example, right? So uh, I would say as a leader, even if you are not well, assuming I'm talking about emotionally being not well, if it's a physical problem, then I think there is nothing that, you know, beyond certain limit, there are very limited things that can be done. But emotionally, if you're not feeling fully well, you are not fully being fully present. As a leader, you should have the ability to bottle up that emotions and present a poker face. If not a happy face, at least a poker face. That's very, very important. Because the way your mood is, is basically it will seep into the rest of the organization. If you're a team lead, it will seep in, it will seep down, it will perk locate down to the rest of the team if you're a chief executive officer it will it will your mood will be pervasive in the entire company and uh, you know in fact many years back when I had just started my journey as a leader uh, I uh, as a person I used to get very impatient when something didn't go as per plan and it's not that the output was affected or anything but I used to make my feelings very transparent, not by saying, but my emotions were all on my face. So my manager gave me a feedback during the appraisal process, right? It was a written feedback. And I asked him, okay, uh, you mentioned that, you know, this happens, but all my, all my parameters are excellent. You have also given me an excellent rating and the deliverable is also excellent. So what, why is this an area of improvement if the output is not getting impacted if, and if the results are excellent? 
and then he told me something which i remember to this day which is one of my biggest lessons that is that you know right now you are still starting your career i was you know 3 years into my career and uh, and you have one team member under you as you grow up that one will go into 10 that 10 will grow into 50 and if you know this is your mood the mood of 50 members of your team will get impacted so you have to be very very sure that if you are feeling something negative if you are feeling impatient you have to bottle that emotions inside you have to keep a poker face as a leader otherwise it will impact the team more and that is something i remember to this day so it's a long answer to your short question but i hope that you know it was helpful I fully understand. Thank you so much, Smita. And uh, absolutely. And I agree that there are moments when uh, we don't feel well necessarily. And um, okay, one solution is uh, on the short term, as you mentioned, to put a poker face and really uh, move on with the situation so that it doesn't affect other people. The other solution, which I would prefer, is to really deal with those emotions and really understand what is happening and why it is happening. But this, of course, doesn't take uh, a few hours. This can take a few days or even weeks or months in order to identify what is happening inside ourselves and how do we move on so that we don't impact our team or our mm. company in the end. And I would say that this also applies to business owners. Do you yes. think that um, business owners nowadays are more seen or they see themselves more like self-employed? Or do they have to start seeing themselves as leaders because they start their own business, they start on this journey. So this means that they are supposed to be leading teams. So uh, actually business owners, uh, it can be two types. Either, you know, you're employing a lot of people under you. So obviously you are a leader. The second is when you are at least two, and that's when, you know, people start. At least when they start, they are these solopreneurs. So what happens is they don't have people, but yet I would say they need to see themselves as leader, be it whether you're a solopreneur or you even if you lead multiple teams. The very fact that you have ventured out of the structured employment life and trying out something on your own means that you are a leader because you're trying something new and you are setting examples. You might not be directly employing people, but there are peers, there are people in your circles, there are old clients, okay, there are new prospects. So you're influencing so many people and the fact that you have taken this risk. So you already have those, you know, you already have demonstrated those leadership qualities without consciously thinking of yourself as a leader. So actually, they should think of people like you and me who are starting our own ventures. We are leaders. We are set an example. We might be having or not might be or not be having the teams right now, but we'll expand and we have to carry that mindset. A leader does not only means, you know, having people who below him, who reports to him, but it also means influencing the people, the touch points around him. So by that virtue, business owners are leaders. Wow, I like that so much. Thank you so much, Mita. Absolutely, I fully agree with you. And I believe that uh, those who are listening to us, the business owners out there, start looking at yourselves as leaders. And exactly what Smitha mentioned, it's, it, it's all about the actions we are taking and how are we impacting other people and how are we inspiring them. So it goes beyond the title, it goes beyond the team. Thank you so much, Smitha. Thank you for being with us. I would like to ask you before we close our interview today, who are you serving? Who can contact you? And how can they contact you? Sure. So my niche, Diana, is uh, helping 25 to 50-year-old professionals. By professionals, I mean, you know, either they are salaried or self-employed or were employed before but now on a career break. Okay. So people who are professionals who want to create a career that they love or are too busy and struggling to find time for their passions or would want to have a better, more purposeful life. So I provide pro purposeful clarity to busy working professionals to take control of their lives and be the best version that they can be. So people can contact me by my website, www.lifecoachsmithadijain.com. 
or by email id smitadijain at lifecoachsmitadijain.com. And I'm also present on all social networks, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and Facebook. And I will respond as soon as I can. Amazing. Thank you so much, Smita. Thank you very much for being with me today. And thank you for all the lessons you are teaching us. I believe that our audience is listening carefully, and especially those who are dreaming to become a leader. Thank you so much once again. My pleasure, Diana. And uh, this is a big project that you are undertaking. It's great that, you know, we connected because of that. I wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you for having me here. Thank you so much, Mitha. And for those of you listening, stay connected because more is to follow. You will learn so much more. Leadership, mindset in business, happiness and marketing are all subjects we all need to be aware of and all learn about it. Thank you so much for watching us and see you next time.